Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. My data won't be doing so well today, since I have planned to destroy the same data all over and over again in three steps, only to then try to recover it. And with each step or rather test, it'll get harder and trickier to rescue that data in good condition. So whether or not I will be able to get back all my data today, who knows. Never mind, I'll give you a spoiler. Some of my files certainly had to face death. But how big are my losses actually? And what's the success rate looking like. For today's test I have connected an older 500GB hard drive to my test system. I've already filled the drive with quite a bit of files for the experiment. A pretty good mix of different files I'd say. Let's see what we have here. 4K MP4 video files, a couple of Excel charts, some private photos, ISO images of Windows 10 and Windows 98 SE respectively, and last but not least, an Olga Karmachina album, so basically MP3 files and a JPEG file, the album cover art. Altogether, this amounts to 16GB of data. To make things easier for the upcoming tests, I'll remember the exact number of files and folders we're dealing with, 84 and 6 respectively. Now these are today's tests. Test number one, the files will simply be deleted, followed by emptying the recycle bin. Test number two, the whole hard drive partition will be deleted. The third, final and most difficult test, the files will be deleted, the recycle bin will be emptied, then the hard drive will be formatted, and following that, the remaining partition will be deleted. So let's get straight into the first test. Now in order for me not to detect the same folders of any previous tests, I'll go ahead and will mark each folder with test 1, 2 and 3 accordingly. Alright, I'll now delete all these folders and empty the recycle bin. The files are now deleted, quote, permanently, end quote. Rescuing data all by yourself, without any help of any tool, is very hard to do, which is why I'll go ahead and use a piece of software specifically designed to do stuff like that. Needless to say, there are loads of good data recovery tools out there, but today I'm sticking with the Partition Wizard by Minitool for a very special reason. Back in early 2017, I ended up being a victim of data loss due to damaged, corrupted partitions, and exactly this piece of software by Minitool, back then an older version obviously, managed to successfully recover all the data I lost. That was roughly 3 terabytes of data. Aside from that, before that event, I had had no backups whatsoever. It seems I was a little too naive and cheap to spend money on hard drives I wouldn't actively use. The takeaway from this experience? Learn from my mistakes. If your data has any value to you, please make backups. Very important in data loss situations is to never ever install a program onto the affected hard drive. Also don't even think about putting the smallest of files onto it. Otherwise you'll run into great risk of overriding your lost files. That would simply be your own fault if you did that. As so often, the free version of tools like these usually do not offer any real data recovery functions, but since I happen to have a license anyway, this won't be an issue for me. However, there certainly even are some free options out there, some of it actually pretty usable. But oh well, the process of recovery is fairly similar across all those tools. So I'm going to select the affected hard drive and navigate to the function named data recovery. After only a short while, more than 30 gigabytes of data has already been found. Most of it has to be old data, since this drive has been in use for like 10 years by now for various projects. Once you take a closer look at the found partition inside the tool, you'll immediately notice those recently deleted folders. But what about the contents? Is it all there? I dare to take the first step for rescue. Super important, never save any rescued data onto the affected drive. This is why I've created a folder specifically for this procedure on my secondary hard drive. In total, according to the partition wizard, we're dealing with 84 files. Looks very promising so far. And what do you look at that? After the transfer onto my secondary drive is complete, we are in fact looking at the whole 16 gigabytes, 84 files and 6 folders from before. The video files play back perfectly, the charts are there as well, those Windows ISO images seem to be in good shape too, and even the MP3 files open up without any issues. Test number one was a huge success, and best of all, it hardly ate up any of my time. On to the second challenge then. Once again, I'll load up the experiment drive with the same exact files again. The folders I'm gonna mark with test two. 
Next up, I'll just delete the drive's partition in Windows. Therefore, no partition is showing up for this drive anymore. So once again, I'll start up the partition wizard and go straight for the option Partition Recovery. This is where you of course should select the corked hard drive. We could also go for a more advanced scan and even choose between a quick or full one. Let's try going with the faster option first. In a matter of seconds, the deleted partition already shows up. The changes now only need to be applied and we should be good to go. Well, except that we first need to assign a drive letter to actually gain proper access to the partition. And voila, my interesting mix of files or rather the partition has successfully been resurrected. This actually appeared to be an easier challenge than the first one. So test number two was a success too. Now to the final and most challenging test out of the three things could turn out ugly here. Because I'm not just deleting all those folders, not only empty the recycle bin, but also format the hard drive after that. And on top of that, I'll even go this far and delete that partition. So I'm going into this with mixed feelings and start up the partition wizard one last time. I'll first try my luck with recovering the partition itself, even though it should be completely empty. Once again, I have to assign a drive letter first, only to witness an empty partition. Things are getting serious now. I'll now take the next step and we'll start the data recovery scan. I immediately can't help but notice the scan takes much longer than it did before until it picks up all those files all across the drive. This is the moment I realized I'll have to be a lot more patient than I had to be with the two previous tests. Over time, more and more of those so-called last partitions show up, even ones of recent years. Looking through all those partitions requires a lot of time. Luckily, the partition wizard is sorting detected raw files by file type for me. Some of my files I start to recognize, albeit only by their file size, since any file names are lost, obviously. For instance, I could in fact really recover all my 4K video files, but since there are no file names anymore, I've also recovered some of my old Full HD nature video recordings. I don't need these, however. Things continue in a similar fashion with the found MP3 files. Just to be sure, I kinda have to save all of those. So in theory, among those audio files, my Olga Karmachina songs should be there too. And yes, this in fact is the case but it seems some game soundtracks have also been picked up. Well, and things go on like that until I found as many of my lost files as possible. Unfortunately, the partition wizard does not sort or list any ISO files and manually searching for those doesn't seem to work either. Meaning those Windows 10 and Windows 98 SE ISO images I had more or less are gone. Sure, if I were to spend hours, if not even days searching in those partitions, I would probably find those files somewhere, but for now I give up. So what has been successfully recovered in a third test and what hasn't? My private photos, I have them back, both. Same goes for the 4K video files. Everything even opens and plays back just fine. And this also applies to those 10 songs of this album. The JPEG file, the album cover art, on the other hand, couldn't be found. The Excel charts happen to work and I've got all I need. So the bottom line is, two ISO images as well as one JPEG file is missing. Other than that, I could recover the rest of my data fairly hassle-free, even though it did take some time. This basically is a good reminder of the fact that success in data recovery is not guaranteed. But if you do things right and don't overwrite any data, you certainly have good chances to recover most of the files. That is assuming the drive itself doesn't have any physical defects. On the other hand, this also is a good reminder for us to be careful when selling our used hard drives. Luckily, there are special cleaning or wiping procedures available that we could use to avoid any invasion of privacy. All in all, I'm happy with the result I got. It turned out to be quite the interesting experiment for me. I hope you found it just as interesting and enjoyable. If that's not the case, no big deal either. With that being said, it's time to end this video now. See you in the next one.